Hello and good morning. This is Kelsey from Kelsey Reads Things at Anna Porter Public Library in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And I am very happy on this Friday morning to finally be discussing with you Breathless by Jennifer Niven. Now this is Jennifer Niven's third young adult novel and this one specifically is definitely a coming of age novel about growing up. Um, experiencing sexual as well as romantic feelings for the first time and it's a book about loss but also um, gaining, gaining experience, gaining um, anatomy, autonomy for oneself if that makes sense. Alrighty, now I would like to um, engage into the plot line. Breathless is a story about a 18-year-old girl named Claudine Henry who lives in Ohio with her two parents and her best friend, Saz. And she's just like any other 18-year-old senior who is preparing for graduation and then a road trip across the United States with her best friend, Saz, before going off to college. She and Saz both are going to different locations for school, and that is something that has been worrying Claude but her world truly falls apart a few days before graduation when her father comes into her room and tells her that he is leaving her mother and he can no longer do the family slash father thing. As a result of that, Claude and her mother are going off for the summer to an island off the coast of Georgia. And there, uh, Claude experiences a lot of first pain, loss, and love, all at the same time. Lots of life experience. And that is the general premise of Breathless by Jennifer Nyman. That's the general plot line. It's definitely a contemporary book. I would say that this book is meant for more mature audiences. Again, as a librarian, it is never my job whatsoever to tell anyone specifically what they should or should not be reading. However, based on reviews, based on the content of the book, there is mature content here. There are a few um, adult scenes, nothing too graphic necessarily, but it even just this, the topics in this book are more mature. So I leave that to your discretion, but I just wanted to let my audience know that this is definitely, you know, I, almost a new adult book, I would say, based on, you know, the content that is inside it. Take that what, as you will, just know that this is a young adult novel about an 18 year old girl who is growing up and about to go off to college for the first time and learns that her once solid family is deteriorating. Some triggers that readers should be aware of in terms of determining if this is a good read for you, um, there are thoughts as well as potential acts of suicide, there is um, loss there are a few um, adult scenes in terms of relations. There is the theme of a broken family and unfortunately um, being made to be silent in terms of her, the divorce and Claude is going through a lot of pain in that and to be told to be silent is something that was definitely in my opinion detrimental to her mental health so there are a few triggers in this book in this book just that i want my readers to be aware of a couple of themes aside from coming of age and loss is about um, just growing up and learning how to not necessarily say goodbye to childhood but nod at it and realize that you are not a child anymore that you're not going to be shielded from the darkness that's in the world, even the darkness that's in your own home. Um, that really resonated with me and one of the reasons why I loved this book a lot. Now I'd like to just talk about some of the, my own thoughts in terms of the book, things I liked, things that stuck out to me, and here we go. I thought that the story was exceptionally well-written. It was heart-wrenching at times, it was hilarious at times, it very much felt like I was reading from the perspective of an 18 year old who has a lot of emotions and feelings and it was great. You could tell that the story was 
supposed to be written from a teenager's perspective because there were times in which Claude is experiencing something and the way she is describing it is like almost nonsensical in, in terms of what how she interprets what is being told to her or what is happening at the time where it's almost hypober hyperbole. Did I say that right? Something like that. It's exaggerated, extremely exaggerated. And then afterwards, she comes to the scene again, not long after that, like within the same chapter, and then explains what actually was said and was actually occurred. There's this, you know, retelling of it in terms of how Claude experiences it in her emotions and in her mind versus what actually happened. So that was really interesting. But in general, the storyline was realistic and believable. Um, divorce is an unfortunate, but, uh, aspect of reality it happens to marriages and even in homes that seem exceptionally happy and that was something that uh really struck a chord with me was that claude was under the impression that her family was really happy they flowed they worked well she never saw her parents fight it had always been her her father and her mother as she says a few times and under her own you know childhood view they were happy and she realizes that she was a little more shielded than she realized and a little more naive than she previously thought i believed the flow of the book was fairly steady um claude's emotions and the way she was experiencing things and also you know, the intrigue of what this island would be like definitely kept my interest. And um, something you should know about the island is there's, of course, no cell phone reception, no internet. So there's no means of Claude being able to reach the outside world unless she goes into this one, I believe it was like a shack of sorts. I can't remember exactly what the business was, but I'm pretty certain they served coffee. And I want to say they had something to do with the dock line and boats coming in and out but she was able to sometimes get reception there and that was interesting to see her um, visit there and then go back to her home and all the interactions she had with the people on the island was really interesting. My honest favorite relationship in the book was not between uh, Claude and her romantic interest and I believe his name, gosh, what was his name? I can't remember his name, I guess he just, wasn't that impressionable to me, but one second. <laughs> Jeremiah, his name was Jeremiah, and he went by Maya. The most um, important relationship, in my opinion, for Claude in this book was that between her mother as well as the one she had between her best friend, Saz. She and Saz had this really cute saying um, when they were departing or if there's like a sad moment and they're trying to help make the other feel better, um, they would say, I love you mores. They would say, I love you mores before they get off the phone in a quiet moment. Uh, one of Claude's that stuck out to me was, I think it was, I love you more than mac and cheese and Zelda Fitzgerald and something else. And it was just so cute and so wholesome. I will say the one relationship with her mother, I mentioned that I liked that one, I really did because it was very raw. Um, apparently she and Claude are very, very similar, not only in terms of their looks, but also their personalities. They're, all, they're both very uh, big personality, uh, creative, um, full of possibility, as Claude uh, explains, whereas her father was more the analytical type, more logically leaning. She's starting to see the differences um, between her parents, but also the differences between herself and her father. And because of that, she feels, I mean, of course, he tells her that he can't do the father thing this summer. It's not exactly a job you can quit. <laughs> Once you're a father or a mother, you're always a father or a mother, at least in my opinion. And Claude is really trying to grapple through that and these feelings of, you know, acceptance slash rejection. One thing I forgot to mention is that Claude is an aspiring author and in the very beginning of the novel, she talks about her creative writing teacher telling her that she's holding back, that she has a lot of potential and he mentions other great things about her writing, but that she's holding back and what's ironic about that is that as soon as she finds out the news about her parents splitting up, she 
she is made to hold back, to hold back her feelings and um, her process through this. Her parents asked her to ma remain silent so that it doesn't spread. They're trying to avoid gossip in their small Ohio town, but in my opinion, that was exceptionally unfair to Claude. But I also liked that it showed that parents are people too were all flawed and were not perfect. So that was something that I really liked about this novel that was touched on, is that we're all human, we all make mistakes, and we all affect each other in different ways. And as I mentioned just earlier there were, um, about possibility, there was this theme of it, this theme of magic and possibility in a summer before her uh, college journey. Alrighty, so that was the general premise of the book. I loved the writing style. I, as I mentioned, I thought it was very well done. I thought the storyline in general was realistic. I liked Claude. I thought she was a very interesting narrator, especially because there were times when she was more numb, when she first learned the news, of course, of her parents splitting up, and then there were times when she was all emotion and just gave it all. And she really threw herself into her writing in this story, and that was something I really liked. And now I'm finally going to discuss some of the quotes that really resonated with me for this book, in this book. On page nine, this is uh, Claude, and she is speaking to her friends about the concept of virginity and how she's a bit offended by the fact that someone can take someone else's virginity. And another thing, have you thought about the way people talk about virginity as if it's owned by other people? Someone takes it and suddenly it becomes theirs. Like it's something we give away, something that doesn't belong to us. She's talking about taking that ownership back, which I thought was just so powerful and I loved that, especially as a... Um, more forward-thinking progressive woman myself, I really appreciated this um, ideology that someone shouldn't be able to take that from you. I would like to think it's given. Another quote that really resonated was on page 23, and I actually mentioned this earlier, it's uh, Claude reflecting on the fact that she and her mother are very, very similar. Even though all my life it's been Claudine and Lauren, Lauren and Claudine, the Lewin met women, because mom never actually took dad's last name, and we've always been more Lewin than Henry, which basically means we believe in possibility and magic instead of always looking at the practical, i.e. Uh, I darly realistic side of things. On page 25, um, when Claude's father asked her to be silent about the separation, and basically how she is reacting slash responding to that, even though it's internal. This is how numb I am. I don't get angry. I don't even ask why. I don't say, you can't tell me who I can or can't talk to about this. You don't get to tell me the world is ending and then ask me not to share it. Instead, I just sit there, hollowing out, Hands withering in my lap, heart withering in my chest, feet dangling over the bed into space because the floor is nowhere to be found. And that was something I may have touched on a little bit but didn't really dive into, this theme of having a floor, a solid ground to walk on, a steady ground, a feeling of assurity is gone from her life. And I really feel like that's a general aspect of loss as well as a general aspect of life. There are times when we don't feel like the floor is steady and it just disappears. And the way that she's, the imagery, and the fact that she's able to explain that feeling and put it into words was just beautifully done. I loved that about this book, is the creative imagery was just Fantastic. On page 27, in terms of defining moments, it was one of those tragedies that my mom, the writer, refers to as a defining moment. And in this moment, she's actually discussing some of their ancestors that lived on 
this island. I guess I should have mentioned that before. They have family that lived on this island and I believe it was a great aunt or something that killed herself. Going back to the actual quote, a defining moment. The moment when life suddenly changes and you're left picking up the pieces. She says that it's actually how you pick up the pieces that defines you. On page 38, in terms of how um, Claudine is reacting around her father immediately after the events of finding out that they are getting a divorce. At home, if my dad walks into a room and finds me by myself, I make up some excuse to walk out. I don't know what to say to him right now. Please bring back my dad because I don't recognize you. This person who's decided to leave my mother and me. I don't even know you anymore. I don't want to know you. <laughs> so powerful, so many emotions. And this last quote I'm going to mention was my absolute favorite that I've read throughout the book in terms of how Claude is feeling and her emotions and, and less about what is actually happening in the plot line. And it's on being a ghost. <laughs> Because after suffering a loss, you become a ghost in your own body. You observe yourself doing things and saying things that you might not normally do or say. You need something to ground you and prove to you that you're still here as a way of feeling something, anything. Okay, so those were the quotes that really resonated with me. And finally, before I tell you what I rated this book, I'd like to go into a little bit of discussion or at least highlight some things that Claude experiences while she's on the island. So once Claude gets there, she meets, of course, Jeremiah Crew, her potential love interest. He, like Claude, has a past, only Claude's is more of a present and his is a past as well as a present, I guess. They both have things that they are grappling with and dealing with. And in this summer, it's almost like they help heal each other and help see the possibility, the magic, the maybe that life has to offer, as um, Claude highlights and speaks about multiple times, which was just, it's so beautiful and inspiring to me. And I'm almost tearing up because this book was just very, very powerful and emotional and made me feel so many things so much pain for these characters. Um, they do things together like uh, scout out turtles on the island and go on adventures and explore, you know, the remnants of her family's home, which was burned down. Um, and it's just everything they go through together is beautiful, but simple at the same time. It's really interesting how just meeting new people and experiencing new things things in life, even in the midst of a tragedy, can just really help you come into your own and who you are meant to be. As you can see, I had a lot of notes for this book, a lot of things to say, but I just wanted to touch on some of the highlights and things that I really, elements, I guess I should say, that I really specifically loved about this book. And in general, I give it a five star rating. Thank you so much for viewing my video with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, I'm always open to suggestions for what to read next. I am currently still reading um, Clockwork Angel. It is the first of the Infernal Instruments. Yes, the Infernal Instrument series by Cassandra Clare. At some point, I will explain how all of her series meld into each other. There are like four or five or six or something, and they're all part of the same universe, same world. So it's really interesting. Um, I'm reading that, the uh, deal with the Elf King, and I'm still listening to The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I expect to finish that probably sometime by next week, and I will most likely do a video on that then. Thanks so much for viewing. I hope you have a wonderful Friday.